Hello, uh, my name is Esa Olela and I'm from Department of Signal Processing and Acoustics of the University of Finland. So I'm going to present uh, the work M estimators of scatter with eigenvalues shrinkage. So this work is joint work with Professor Daniel Palomar and Professor Frederick Pascal. So we have a very fantastic menu and let's go on to the first item. So the covariance estimation problem. So we have a random vector x which is p-variate and we have n samples of that random vector and what we assume is that the, the, the number of samples is larger than the data dimensionality p. And the unknown covariance matrix is commonly estimated using the sample covariance matrix, denoted by S. But when data dimensionality P is of the same order of magnitude as N, then this is a very inaccurate estimator. And therefore, one commonly used a regularized sample covariance matrix which then depends on the shrinkage parameter beta. And when this parameter is close to zero, then you can see that this regularized estimator is just a scale time identity matrix, where this scalar term, so the trace of S divided by P, is just the grand mean of the eigenvalues. So this means that this estimator shrinks the eigenvalues of the sample covariance matrix towards the, the grand mean of the eigenvalues. The problem, even with the regularized estimator, is that uh, it is sensitive to outliers and it's also very uh, inefficient estimator for non-Gaussian data. And in this case, one often uses an M estimator of scatter, which is defined as follows. So it's uh, this sigma hat uh, solves an implicit estimating equation. And you have to define a weight function u, which is a non-increasing function. There are some commonly uh, used weight functions, for example, Tyler's weight function, Huber's weight functions, and these are robust weight functions that you can use together in this equation. So we want to, or what we propose in this paper is an estimator that is very natural as uh, alternative to the regularized sample occurrence matrix. So what we do is we basically uh, replace the sample occurrence matrix by the M estimator. And then what we propose is a very simple and data adaptive computation of the optimal uh, shrinkage parameter beta that minimizes the mean squared error. And you can use this estimator for any weight function u. So even for a Gaussian weight function. And we will show you later how to do this. So let's move on to the next item on the menu. So let's talk about a little bit about this uh, proposed shrinkage m estimator of scatter. So first, I would like to point out that an M estimator sigma hat is consistent to an underlying population parameter, which is defined as a solution to this equation that you see here. So the sigma naught. And ideally, we would like to find a shrinkage parameter that minimizes the mean squared error. So uh, it minimizes the expected um, propenius difference between the estimator and the underlying parameter that it is estimating, so sigma naught. But this problem is in general quite intractable because an M estimator sigma hat is defined using an implicit estimating equation. So then one has to use some different means. And what we do is we use a surrogate estimator for M estimator. Now first let me point out how to compute an M estimator. You basically iterate the following fixed point equation 
and in the limit you obtain the solution to the m estimating equation but what about if you start with an initial value that is the true underlying parameter sigma naught and you iterate only once then you obtain the matrix c and if you use this c to to obtain a proxy for the rec for this shrinkage m estimator sigma hat beta then this c beta is actually a kind of a surrogate for that but it is fictional because the initial value sigma naught that we used is actually unknown to us so so the so we replace the original problem in the sense that we minimize we find the shrinkage parameter beta such that it minimizes the mean squared error between our surrogate estimator and the true parameter and this type of approach is similar that was used by Chen, Wiesel and Hero in the paper that is referenced here so our first uh, theoretical result is that this shrinkage parameter has a very simple closed form expression and this expression has some unknown parameters or in fact four unknown constants the first one is the scale eta naught and the second one is gamma which is a sphericity measure and then we have in the denom uh, <coughs> in the denominator we have two constants that are expected values of the traces of the matrix c well this still is not too convenient but this expression can be simplified further if we assume that the samples that the data is a random sample from an elliptical symmetric distribution so now we are able to move on to a main course of today so how to compute the shrinkage parameter so like i said earlier we assume that the data is coming from an elliptically symmetric distribution this means that the pdf is of the following form so the pdf depends on sigma which is the positive definite matrix called the scatter matrix and then there is a function g which determines the elliptical distribution so for example if we take multivariate multivariate normal distribution the function g has the following form given here and we can have multivariate t distribution for example with mu degrees of freedom and there are many other examples of elliptical distributions that belong to, to this family for example compound Gaussian distributions so the underlying scatter matrix parameter is a constant times the, the covariance matrix when the when the distribution has finite variance so um, what about the population value sigma naught of the m estimator it turns out that also it it is also a constant times a scatter matrix sigma where this constant can sigma uh, can be computed in the following manner here you see another function psi which is the weight function u of t times t and now if we define another constant psi 1 as an expected value of the following positive random variable um, then what we have is the next theoretical result of this paper so when once we have data that is a random sample from elliptical distribution then this shrinkage parameter that we derived earlier in theorem one has a very simple expression that depends only on two unknown parameters so gamma which was the sphericity measure and psi one that you see in this slide 
So this means that we just need to estimate those two parameters. So we have already a very good estimator for the sphericity measure. And then for the constant psi one, which is the uh, constant that actually depends on the underlying m estimator through the u function that is used. And we discuss in the following slides how we can estimate this constant. So once we have these two estimators co computed, we can compute our estimator of the shrinkage parameter and then, then the shrinkage m estimator. So the first estimator in our uh, uh, <clears throat> in our general uh, family is regularized sample chorus matrix. And this estimator is obtained when the u function is just identity function. In this case, the m estimator is the sample covariance matrix. And in fact, the shrinkage parameter that was derived in theorem two is not approximation, but it is exact minimum MMSE solution. The constant psi one for this weight function is just one plus kappa. And this kappa is kurtosis of the marginals, so of the marginal variables of this random vector x divided by three. So this means that psi one, so estimate of psi one is very easy to compute. And once we have computed that, we can obtain our regularized sample covariance matrix S of beta. So what about if you, we use a robust weight function? And a very good robust weight function is Huber's weight function. And for this weight function, we have to define a constant C, which basically determines how robust this estimator is. Then we can define a Winserized observation W, and with a little effort, one can show that the constant psi one that we needed to estimate is one plus kappa but now the kappa is the one over one divided by three of the kurtosis of this Winserized observation. Well, this also means that psi one is very easy to compute. So we can easily compute hat psi one as one plus uh, kappa hat. And then we have regularized multivariate T estimator. In this case, we use the weight function that corresponds to maximum likelihood estimator of scatter when the data is generated from multivariate t distribution with mu decrease of freedom. Now it's very easy to show that psi one has uh, uh, the following form. And as you can see, it depends on p, so the dimension and mu, which is the decrease of freedom of the d distribution. So how do we compute this estimator? Well, first we compute an estimate of the mu, then we compute the weight function and the underlying m estimator, so the t mle. Then we can use this mu hat to compute uh, the estimate of psi one, and then we can block, uh, once we have also computed the sphericity estimator, we have estimate of the shrinkage parameter, which we use to compute the shrinkage M estimator. So let's now move on to the simulation studies. So in this uh, small simulation study, we have N observations from an elliptical distribution. The scatter matrix parameter has an autoregressive one structure and the dimension is 40 and the sample length varies from 60 to 280. And then we compute the normalized mean squared error. And this we average this value over 200 Monte Carlo triers. And as you can see that uh, we have our three estimators and then we compare it with Ledua Wolf estimator. So what we see from this normalized mean squared error plot that when the data is Gaussian, each of these estimators are doing uh, similar job in, uh, in estimating the underlying true parameter. But when we have 
multivariate t-distributed data and the decrease of freedom is either five or three. So three means that we have quite heavy tailed data. And in this case, the regularized sample coherence matrix estimator fails. And therefore you cannot see it in this plot on the right hand side. Also the ledua wolf estimator, which is also a non-robust estimator fails and it gives very poor results. When we have decrease of freedom five, the non-robust estimators are far behind the robust estimators. And here you can see how the parameter beta changes when the sample length increases. When we have a small sample length, the beta is smaller than when we have a large sample length. And for regularized sample coherence matrices, we have quite different value for the shrinkage pyramid. So what else is cooking? Well, um, we have now uh, extended this work to a journal paper that is quite soon finalized and we will put it to archive and give MATLAB and R codes. So hopefully you find a use for this and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you.